students. We're back again today, Living Radio 90.9. Like I told you earlier, in Living Radio, we are very popular in nature. We have the Living Radio 90.9. You can hear us through Living Radio 90.9. You can as well see us through the Living Television and the Living Television, Living TV Academy. Work together, one hand, work hand in glove. And today is another wonderful day, which is of the moment. We decided today to go through the radio 90.9. And I'm sure you're going to listen to Tom Michael Promit. I promised you on Tuesday that today we are going to repeat that broadcast of uh, the update on Nigeria refinery. And we talk about precisely in the Medina State. And that is exactly what we are going to do today. This, this is the eighth day of uh, December, and then uh, we all believe, all Nigerians hope and raised, believing and thinking that by December, before the end of December, that the operation will, uh, you know, commence fully. And then, where are we? And uh, how is it going to be? That's exactly what we are looking at today. And then uh, we believe our government, our not assurance and promise, and there are other things that will hold that. As usual today in the program, I have uh, an analyst in the studio. That is uh, in the person of uh, Comrade Nabdi Lekwachi. Comrade Nabdi Lekwachi is a historian. He's also a political affairs analyst and public affairs analyst. He's a man who is very current and versatile with the affairs of this country. He loves dealing with death. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, good day, uh, listener. How are you? All right. Um, I'm sure you are aware that the Nigerian, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited (NPC), you know, has uh, maintained that for that cost refinery element, company will start operation this December. They said all the logistics are have been put in place. Then as we discuss this, we'll still go back to that refinery. And you also hear some of the engineers, what they have to say. And said, having heard about this, about the NNPC and uh, in the commencement of operation this December, do you think it's realizable? <laughs> Thank you so much. I think uh, we've uh, come to uh, um, believe in one thing in Nigeria, or practice one thing in Nigeria, that is hoping against hope. You know, the Dangote refinery is supposed to be on stream by now, or supposed to be ha have been activated by now, but there are a lot of bottlenecks, we are told. A lot of things uh, account at the reasons for which uh, that project has not come on stream. Um, we have uh, had to witness a lot of commissioning and launching of uh, certain projects, but for the activities themselves to take up, uh, had been a different ballgame entirely. Remember, before they even promised us, a, they gave us a date earlier than December, before they now settled for the December. Um, my own is this it is simple. I think government must always promise what it can actually actualize. And before you begin to talk about um, the refineries coming on stream, you must make sure that the facilities and the, everything required to put the refinery in place is on ground. Not to make promises and then you begin to also make excuses. You will also remember that um, in, we live in a country where um, some time, so a couple of months back, the last administration at the 11th hour actually, um, uh, we were told, rented uh, an aircraft, brought it here and uh, told us they were launching the Nigeria Air. Uh, today, that also seems to be a, a mirage or one of the spectacular. Um, uh, <laughs> outings of that past administration. So what, 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 what is most important to us is not just this refinery coming on stream, but the government also triggering other private own refineries. Uh, well, I was happy when I heard that uh, the one at uh, uh, Imo State, you understand, the one in Imo State actually come on stream. Um, uh, the, the one um, uh, at uh, um, uh, Imo State, you understand, a private own refinery. But, but, but the most important thing is, is this, you see, I, I, I do not even believe that this refinery may come on stream. But I don't want to uh, be a doubting Thomas now. But the fact remains that 
um, if the refinery would, would come on stream, there ought to be a um, <laughs> level of preparedness we'll be seeing by now. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? In terms of testing and then in terms of updates, we are not seeing that. So I do not know the level of miracle uh, they are going to perform or the size of miracle they are going to perform to trigger the refinery or to bring it uh, on board. Uh, that's it. I think um, uh, it's, uh, it's a shameful thing that uh, the refineries we have, four of them, combined with can only give you about 445,000 barrels per day. What is our, what is our OPEC requirement? Our OPEC quota for 2023, 2024 is about 1.7 or 1.8 million barrels per day. We'll come to that. Okay. Now, let us, uh, let's look at the operation of the, the refinery yes. on or before the 8th of this uh, December. I yes. also don't want to believe uh, that uh, you are part of uh, one of the Nigerians who are very pessimistic about this, uh, about this uh, and the yeah. time coming, coming up. Yes. Because uh, why do I say that the managing director of the facility, you know, uh, Abraham Anoja, you know, I've already shown Nigerians in the television broadcast, that um, he had noted also that the procurement of uh, the process for the rehabilitation of this refinery is now 98% complete. I think with this assurance, <laughs> uh, there is hope. <laughs> you see, I, 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 I want to believe that is hope. Okay. And, and, and that is what hoping I just hope too. I, 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 I don't want to, yes, that, that, you, that, that is even Nigeria hope, hoping I just hope. You see, um, uh, they will always tell us such things. And then when it comes to putting those things in place, we may not see those things. But let me also tell you this, the refinery we are talking about is a 60,000 barrels uh, per day capacity refinery. And then we are looking to do what? To bring it on stream. But the question should be, what components of the refinery are still serviceable? Because I, I always say that certain equipment, certain facilities and gadgets, they are, are no longer serviceable. They need to be overhauled and new ones brought in place. So if you say procurement and you done and, 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 and that you were 98% percent um, uh, uh, ready, yeah. you understand? 98% readiness should actually mean that by now we are refining to an extent, no matter how little. But I don't want to go there. So it's left for him to say, 98% ready, and then for us now to see that readiness, that preparedness, that actually now we are seeing that the protocol, the, it was built in the 1960s, that that refinery is now back on stream. Okay, if you're talking about this, I know why you're saying this, because I don't know the part of uh, the They make such a promise too. Our uh, president, President uh, Muhammad Buhari told us that the uh, the finally mentioned the billions of dollars that have been invested in yes. and that it was come on board before the end of that administration. Unfortunately, mm. it never happened. Mm. But this time around, uh, even as we go on air to see the refinery, you know, with a video clip, you will also discover that there are people who are there working there at night to ensure it works. But you know, just like you are talking about that now, when is it going to be? If we are talking about 98%, sure. 98% completion. Automatically, it means it's, uh, it's as good as done. Yeah. But that being said, you know, do you think uh, that the current, the present administration, do you think that the, this subsidy removal has anything to do with this refinery coming on board by the December? This is a very, very, that is a very beautiful question you asked. And then I love that you asked this question because of this subsidy removal. They told us uh, they will be using the money from subsidy to do palliatives and then uh, build refineries and then uh, do a lot of uh, infrastructural work. But the same administration is also seeking to borrow from um, the, uh, the, the World Bank to fund budget the deficits and then do palliatives. The, the same palliatives they said they will be using subsidy, subsidy. To, to do. They are looking for, uh, in fact, our budget is now to be funded from borrowing. But, but, but that's by the way, you see. Um, um, with that, they are using the subsidy um, um, funds to revive the refinery. It's not should not even be in the question. Why? Because from 2001 or so to 2020, we spent over 25 billion naira doing turnaround maintenance. The same thing I understand they are doing now. We've spent over 20 more than the money Van Gogh used in 10 years to build his own refinery, about 14 to 18 billion US dollars. So. The, the truth here is that I don't want to uh, be perceived or be seen as someone who is uh, um, uh, totally pessimistic about the whole project. I am praying that for once, 
they actually um, prove us wrong. I mean, this ambition. And when I say it, 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 it doesn't mean that I'm a political person or that I'm partisan. But it's just that the federal government, from the get go, uh, since 1999, we returned to democracy. I do not know what we can lay our finger to or what we can point to and say this was that particular project they began when they promised and actually met the timeline. So I don't want to be um, uh, pessimistic about it. But, but, but the truth remains that yesterday, Sanusi, the former CBN governor, was asking a question. He was asking them, where are the trillions you said you'd be saving from subsidy? subsidy and the question remains that they said they'd be removing subsidy if I, by June and July of this year. Present, when I am at Tinibu, made a startling, a startling re revelation when, when he said they were able to save up to one trillion naira from subsidy yeah, remover yeah. and that they will be using it to do palliative. Yet, the same administration is looking for funds from the World Bank, you understand, to do palliative. He said he's also looking for funds or for loans from the African Development Bank, including from Islamic Development Bank, to uh, focus on infrastructure. So it tells you that there is a, a high level of insincerity in government. Okay, now looking about this, uh, just about last week, uh, the, uh, the, the National Assembly also talked about the 86.99 billion US dollars and uh, 100 million euro to be borrowed. And uh, I'm sure as we speak, I think uh, it has been approved for Mr. President, you know, to work on. Do you think that these, uh, this part, part of this money we talk about now is uh, meant for this uh, refinery? It could, it could not. Yeah, it may or it may not. But then the questions Nigerians are not asking are many, but one, and I think should be the chief of, 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 of them all, is this. What is the breakdown uh, analysis of this, of this loan? When you get these loans, what is the breakdown analysis of the loans? Where, uh, what, 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 what component of the loan goes to education? What component to security? What component to infrastructure? And I will say this, you see, uh, there, there was something that happened that I became a bit agitated and worried. What was it? The federal government was looking to borrow from Afro-Exim Bank to do what? To stabilize the Naira. They, they were trying to borrow, to use it to cushion foreign exchange liquidity problems we are having. It happened under this administration. So practically, you see that this administration came and said, we are not going to be borrowing like the past or previous administration. Yeah, exactly. But today they are borrowing. And we see that they want to even borrow like the past administration. Now, it was for the same borrowing that the National Assembly, the, the Ninth Assembly, which I felt shouldn't have even sat in the first place. That assembly is, a, is embarrassment to Nigeria. Uh, it was just a rubber stamp assembly. Uh, uh, the, law is, the law then was that when you want to borrow, you, do, you look at your revenue. If you don't borrow from the CBN more than 5% of your revenue for a year, uh, then the that as assembly increased that figure from 5% to 15%. And it was, to me, totally unacceptable. And they allowed the president then to borrow. He met, I understand, let, let us also be sincere and frank, that the former president met um, um, uh, uh, re, 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 recession and, and, and hard times, and therefore had to resort to borrowing. But when you borrow, there should be a margin, there should be a threshold you don't cross. The law stipulated for that. So uh, the, the president came and was borrowing. He met the ways and means advances of the CBN at an amount below $1 billion, just about 900 and something million. But he increased it to $22 billion when, when he was, sorry, to $22 trillion when he was living, from less than $1 billion to $22 trillion. And now we've seen it's unsustainable. They now try to do one, to convert it to a um, 40-year <laughs> promissory note plan. And the National Assembly said, it's okay, we can do that for you. You see, it's not just about us, it's about the future we are trying to undermine. So whether or not they are using the, 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 a, a component of the, the, the loan to fund this project in the refinery, is the question Nigeria should be asking, you understand? By saying, give us, you even uh, engage the debt management office, DMO, which collaborates and coordinates these loans and say, Give us a better an, an, an analysis and who is funding the 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 finance. But to 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 me, it would be a very huge disappointment and uh, an embarrassment if this the finance is being funded aside any form from the so-called subsidy funds. All right. 
Now, let, 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 let us just digress a little. Uh, let us go back to the National Assembly. Yes. Let us try. Let us understand the functions of the National Assembly. And then, uh, why is it? Why is it that every political party will always want all his members to be there? Just like you talked about, uh, mm. even outside what you said now, a lot of uh, Nigerian commentators have talked about this. The National Assembly, the Tenth Assembly, saying it as a rubber stamp, worse than the past one. Mm. And now. Uh, is it proper that every every bit, both borrowing and so on, should uh, should be approved by the National Assembly? Because without the approval of the National Assembly, what yeah. will work? Yes. I think our financial laws, our, our fiscal laws are clear to that extent that um, no, it's, in fact, Section 12 of the Constitution is clear. I think Section 12 or Section 14 is clear that no international agreement, and this also includes. Uh, the borrowing, the bilateral agreement through which you uh, 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 reach the uh, multilateral development banks, that's the MDBs. So no, in, in no agreement Nigeria shall enter into with any foreign body shall have a meaning except to the extent backed it up by the National Assembly, which means the National Assembly also performs this duty of saying, no, we are not going to allow this to happen, including oversight function. The constitution is clear, they have to perform oversight functions, that's to oversee other arms of government, including departments, ministries and agencies, even professors and offices, to say, what have you done? Because they have to use their committees to check their budget, to check their funding, to check how they've been able to implement whatever project they claim to be impl implemented. But I think, unfortunately enough for us, uh, very unfortunate, um, the National Assembly, not even the past one, not even the present, the present one, but the, the ones before, have not been playing this role the way they ought to be playing this role, you understand? So that's why okay. it is easy for the president to wake up every morning and say, I am requesting for a loan. And in most cases, the loans will also cater to the, uh, cater to, uh, for, 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 uh, for the interest of the members, you understand? When you are borrowing to pay them, when you are borrowing to fund the they, they, they sit in the budget, and, and when you are borrowing to buy SUVs for them, you will always have them say, Yes, go and borrow. Yeah, okay. I'm also supporting you. Okay. Uh, having said that, though I'm not a management expert, but I know that um, it is very wrong to pay even salaries from the investment capital, rather you pay from the profit. Yeah. And then, if Nigeria continues this way, uh, do you think that uh, the SUV, 160 million SUV per person in the National Assembly, that do you th don't you think that is one of the major reasons why they approve uh, most of these are loans yes. because they know yes. something somehow. Let, will let also me drop shock out. you. The first time, the first thing the Tinubu government did when it came to power, when the subsidy was to give or to award palliative to National Assembly and then to the National Judicial Council, the the National Assembly got seventy billion naira. The Judicial Council got thirty five billion naira. To me, that that's meaningless. I don't know what that means. Now you see that. When the president does this for you, okay, as you speak today, the president went to Dubai with over 40 members of the National Assembly. You understand? Now you ask yourself, how many members of the National Assembly are on climate or on the environment committee? That's the question. Now, why would you go with 40? Then you go with over 60 or 100 and something members uh, drawn from the civil service. You see that the, the, the wastefulness. What the relevance of the, the relevance of, the of their going there in the first place. So to me, even when some of them could have joined virtually using the Zoom platform or whatever. And they will uh, be, you would have, have seen that they are there present too. But then that's by the way. So it, it, it tells you that the National Assembly we've had so far had not been able to mount check on the executive. Had not been able, when last we hear about impeachment, when last we hear about impeachment in America, you see Trump was impeached twice. President Trump was impeached twice. And there had been a debate in the Congress in America saying, they will shut down the government because of what excesses of President Biden, as they as they as they suppose. Now in Nigeria, I don't even hear about that. So what what you hear about is that the National Assembly members are cheering the president, singing his campaign song for him, saying, "On your mandate we shall stand, even when the elections are over and won and and lost." So it tells you that I'm sorry to say, but then most of the people there are not representing of the people; they are representing themselves and right. representing the other. Or, other interests. Yeah, so we, once we can feel the, uh, the impact down, down here, exactly. because we have one that is represented here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They say nothing except when, while, while coming home. You don't, you don't, you see don't them. even see yeah. them. While coming home, they come with their 
they come with their big big SUVs and their and let me tell you, see, you see, um, but uh, before that, you talked about uh, impeachment. Yes, President Buhari was almost impeached. You know, in the just part, he, he, he was never impeached. He was almost. He was never almost impeached. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, there was never any impeachment proceeding against that man. Even when he committed impeachable offenses, there was never... In fact, the time they talk so, about... Of the it, National Assembly, I will tell you something. Like the time they talk about it, is a certain man who was the majority leader of the Senate stood up and said, it is the turn of the North to provide the president. If you impeach the president, tomorrow will be the turn of the North to also impeach another president. Who knows that the North has the numbers? And that man then was Ahmed Lawan. In that, and that was the eighth assembly. By the ninth assembly, he became the senate president. You know what that means? <laughs> so it is. Yeah, I, I, and, the, and then I was trying to say something. You see, um, if these lawmakers are sincere and honest, some of them will not accept that vehicle. Why am I saying it? I'm saying it because you have a house where someone had been there since 2007 or 2011. In 2011, he collected this vehicle and used it for four years. And the time he was using this vehicle, at the expiration of that particular assembly. When another provision was made for procurement, the one he was using was still serviceable. He didn't tell honorable members, my car is still serviceable, let me use it for more four years. He got a, a new one. The next four years, he won the nation again and got a new one. And the thing that is, if someone had been there since 2007 to now, they have collected five times. Like those that are up there. They are up there for, for about 20 years, they collected five times. And he didn't, for once, say, my own is now you, you are there. In fact, you were there when they passed the law. You know, recently, they passed, okay, about two, three, four, five years ago, they passed a law that 15 year, 15 year fairly used vehicle, 15 year fairly used vehicle can fly Nigerian road. Yet they are using new ones. So, so, so it's marks of hypocrisy. There is, a, there is, a, there is a something before we go, shortly before we go on break, there's something I, I also want us to look at. Yeah. Recently, the government is talking about. Uh, you know, prohibiting every form of importation to this country. And then we have a local made vehicle that is very wonderful mm. and movable, all right, in this country. And yet they are importing. What does that imply? I, I think uh, that is the reckless consumption we have, the culture of reckless consumption we've been pruned. I will tell you something. See, apart from Emerson, we also have a laser day, a car assembling or car manufacturing company here. The one in in, in Pejo or Toyota. Now, the question should be: What is the interest of Nigerian government? Why will you want to procure vehicles? You begin to talk about SUV that will now be imported by a company. Because in government, you don't just come as an individual; you come as a registered incorporated entity that will be procured by a company who may even uh, do over quotation. You understand? And we are we are not sincere here. You see, um, they will they will import this company and 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 okay, and someone is being enriched at, at the expense of taxpayers. Now, um, apart from that, you, 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 you should be asking yourself, before you talk about ending importation, what is your comparative advantage? Where are you advantaged? Where do you have advantage? You know, some saying now, recently, the ease of doing business, the ease of doing business in the said that Nigeria was 34, 34th out of the 50 something countries in Africa. That, that, then you talk about, the, the present, this time the president travels outside the shores of the country. For, for whatever reasons. And we are crying, saying the people who accompanied him were more. They said he was going to look for foreign investors, but there are indicators that will attract foreign investors. One is security, two is power supply, three is this is of doing business I'm talking about, four is foreign exchange liquidity available. You ask yourself, do all these variables, are they here? Do we have them? So, if you're talking about re re removing importation, fine, all of us are looking forward export-led growth or export-oriented economy. But you must make sure you put infrastructure in place here. Yeah? You must also make sure you are able to calibrate and then bring informal sector to one sector. All right. You uh, must make sure you provide the necessary requirements for the economy to, to thrive. All right. Uh, we are going to go on a very short break. When we come back, uh, issues of the moment will continue. And then I will also look about, we'll also talk about... Uh, it's not just about the SUVs. I will also find out whether most of them are they just having these vehicles or are some of them taking it in cash when we come back. Just don't go away. We'll be back shortly.
Our wonderful listeners, I'm sure you're still there. I'm glad you're still there listening to your favorite program, Issues of the Moment, though on Radio 90.9 today. All right, moving ahead, we are talking about the update of the Nigerian refinery. Why are we talking about this today? It's just to see how the sufferings of the people could be ameliorated. As you know, a lot of people are complaining. So many vehicles are packed now because it is difficult to afford 7,000 naira just for 10 liters of fuel. With refinery here in Nigeria, I'm sure it will be a little better. Though some had argued that uh, it's not going to help anything. All right, um, comrade, do you think it is true that when we have a refinery here, that uh, will still be buy PMS at the full price of seven hundred and uh, you know some fractures of naira. Yeah, if we have refinery is working, uh, definitely the, the the price of uh, the product will drastically reduce, drastically reduce. Uh, but the problem now is what is stopping us from uh, getting these refineries activated. That's the problem. But are you thinking the refineries come on screen and uh, the price will definitely reduce? It will also help our um, exports and then our our, also, um, uh, our foreign exchange to, to take a, a serious sale. Uh, that, 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 that balance. Okay, now, you told, we are just talking about refinery because it looks as if that is the greatest problem Nigerians have. No, I don't think so. What about power? Let us look at the power sector. Mm -hmm. And then starting from here, yes. this is a studio. Yes. For the past uh, three, four, five days to seven days now, we've not seen any power supply. We're using a solar and diesel to yes. make sure we we'll run here. And then how can we survive? And then is the federal government doing anything to ensure that power supply will improve also in Nigeria? You see, the other day the president went to Dubai to talk about uh, the Convention on the uh, Framework of Climate Change Summit or something like that. And I was asking my question, my same that question, what is Nigeria doing to transition from the current mood we are to clean energy, renewable energy that will guarantee power? So what are, we, what are we doing with all the reserves we have, and that, including the vegetation, things that can actually, uh, we can actually leverage to transmit or to transit to the, uh, to the height we want to. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know. But the truth remains that power sector had presented itself a perennial problem. I think the admission that came closest to trying to fix it was that of Yaya Yaya Ladua, who, who made remarkable um, uh, um, strides. So in terms of what Strain said, he said he was going to move Nigeria from at least 4,000 megawatts dependence to 12,000. Unfortunately, he died and the project died with him. Um, ever since then, what have we been having? Privatization, renaming, changing of names, including as it affected ABA from EDC, we became uh, ABA Power Limited among them. I think uh, at a point we saw that, in fact, we, we started witnessing power outage, blackout, the whole federation. Sometimes the they, 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 they group would drop. And we all know what that has actually done in terms of taking a toll on production and then productivity. Yeah, let, 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 just, uh, though we are digressing a little, but let us just look at uh, this uh, about power, about power, and then the EE mm. Because it, it looks as if uh, instead of uh, growing, we mm. are we are going down. It's, uh, it's, this is not even stagnation. Yeah, I think uh, we are depreciating yeah. seriously. Because uh, what would you say about about power and the EE I think the two. I don't know which one, which one now to say. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, 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 compared with the kind of bills you get yes, on uh, the daily basis, yes, the, the the meter, the prepaid the meter, the meter, and uh, now from sixty something thousand to eighty something thousand, yes. and this is so, is meant to be free. Yes, I, I will tell you something. You see, um, to, I'm sorry to say it, but uh, I think when the Ababa one limited were coming, the geometry guys when they were coming, the they made a lot of promises to us that they would generate by themselves and that they will also distribute by themselves. And then uh, the asset management company of Nigeria and then the National Industrial Court, there was an arrangement to hand over all facilities of EDC. Uh, about in first aid, I should remember, yes. about nine local government councils in Nigeria State. But unfortunately, these people, these guys have thrown us into perpetual darkness, if he has not taken. And we've been shortchanged here. The bills are still crazy. The metering project, they've not been able to do much in terms of that. I don't want to talk about the tap, the tap law saying this is the amount you don't even pay beyond. They've gone aside that very, uh, to me, uh, 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 that margin. Uh, people are still paying crazy bills. It's still estimation, after all. And so to me, I think if we begin to talk about that one now, it will affect us. But the people who are paying um, terribly for this are owners of small businesses. If you go to Ngwaru, you understand what I mean? 
people who are producing tight, who are making tight, who are making clothes, who are making bosses, who are making a lot of things, jeans and what have you. Not, not just that, because I know in my little, in my little... Even uh, babas, even babas, do I even keep telling? Then we come to this place, this corporate place we are staying today. Uh, currently, as we are here now, we are not on... on on power from then unfortunately they, they have they've stayed here for over a year and we are still witnessing this Nothing so you happen. can't tell us you are still testing the ground it simply means there were information there were preparations you missed and you need to go back to your brother let us just look at this before we round up I, before we take one or two things uh, concerning the refinery and then end for the day mm -hmm. and then talking about this it is important and uh, it is important because even our listeners out there will be so happy and interested in this uh, topic that concerns uh, this power supply mm -hmm. because recently they have continued with their estimation of bills yes. and this estimation of bills is so crazy yeah. and a lot of uh nigerians uh, and especially abians and mm -hmm. other people are seeing this as extortion Mm. And the most unfortunate thing is that it's coming from such a reputable man, a prof, you know, who owns that uh, organization. What do you think people will do concerning this? Um, I don't know, but uh, prof may prof will actually be may actually be a respectable <laughs> person, but uh, his organization is run by different we've people. Invited, we've invited, we've invited so many of their members and they will not yeah. come. And they will, they, not come they will not come because they know what they're doing. They will not come. They will not come. They will not, I'm aware. They, they, in most cases, they decline interview too. Um, the fact remains that uh, they have operational challenges. They have gaps. They have things they need to fix. And it, and, and it does appear by the day that they did not notice, they did not take note of these challenges. Because if you see or if you remember the lofty promises they made when they were coming, one, that they were in charge of their own affair, that they would generate and distribute. That's a huge one. Then, that they, they, they will say something about Afan power plants. They say they have a, a gap there with a shell, shell, shell plants, that they have an installation there, that they have a, a equipment there they can generate from. And then we all agreed and we are happy saying uh, goodbye to open the power supply. But we never knew that when they come on stream, things will take a worse turn. And I do not know. And what, 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 what I want to ask them now is they begin to engage about people, about community. Let's begin to have dialogue with them. Power Hall, let them explain to us what, 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 Every day you see them with this their short mini bus going with a ladder, and and you and you check that. The system now is that they will not give life for a considerable amount of days in a month. Then, toward the end of the month, when they want to share bills, they will now give you light for two days. And but then in that, will, uh, two days, not even up to 12 hours a day. They will, not, they will, not, they will make you see the light and then give you the bill. You pay, thinking that they have improved. And the moment, and you, pay, the moment you pay, the light disappears again. So, and, and then are, some of them are still going in the way of the old EEDC. They still disconnect consumers and then they the wire. with the wires that's also, no, 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 no. even in the neck acts even in the laws guiding them uh, they have no such powers and they have no powers to say pay us before we connect you back you understand so some of these things are still there crazy billing is still there many people are still omitted you understand and the truth is that if they want to get it right they should also look at the people who are off grid there are a lot a lot, a lot of off grid a, 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 a persons in Nigeria, you know, you understand? Then the issue of so, they, and I think it's their own issue. The best thing they will do is to come here or anywhere else or any any media platform, you understand, to talk about it. I was thinking that they would do better in customer relations. We had a program where we, the, we, they are the worst. We, we pleaded with them, say, make sure you listen to our back complaint. Make sure you hear people out. Okay, let, let, let me so, just shock you from the from the area I live at. The, they had a meeting, yeah. and because of this uh, rocking of light and so on, mm -hmm. and they agreed that uh, they, everybody there must stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And they wrote a letter to to, to Abapa Supply. Yes. Would you believe that the young man there, they called the customer relation, whatever, yes. and that refused accepting letters from people? <laughs> they will tell you the complaint of about people and uh, the complaint of about people is too much. Yes. You see. And with with arrogance. 
I, at times I begin to wonder if these people are, are, are later in the, in the field of public relations because for you to handle such yes. a position, you must be a public relations pendant. Yes. But it's yes. quite you unfortunate see. what is happening. So where do we go from here? You see, uh, um, sometimes uh, you, go to, you go to school, you're not given a certificate. You say you graduated with first class upper, uh, with first <laughs> upper class, class. Or class upper, or upper, upper second class grade or whatever. It should be about learning and character. So they themselves should also do better in terms of training and retraining some of their staff. In terms of what public image management yes. is very important. You call desk officer. I've seen someone call desk officer in one of these telecoms companies. They it, it committed in an exchange, a whole exchange. You can imagine when a desk officer, someone who is the image, the first yeah, the yes. first the, the, as, as the first person in the, the line of the, of the organization. The point of the organization, the first the person in the line of what that organization you are trying to go to the organization, you the person you meet. You see how uh, they are uh, uncultured, how civilized they are. They can even they use, suppose they can even use foul languages. Them. Yes. So uh, in most cases, you see that people are like that. Then that's why that training is important. Then how do you work under pressure? It's also important. Then your psychology as a human being is also important. Then your 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 mind frame is also important in all these things. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, the that of uh, Abapa supply is supposed to be a full addition. It's supposed to be one day <laughs> discuss. Uh, <laughs> but um, because of that, now let's go back to the refinery and our expectations. Yes. Now we're talking uh, we were talking about the SUV one sixty million and um, how the National Assembly they are not helping matters, mm -hmm. especially as it concerns uh, both infrastructure, this power we're talking about, yeah. and even the refinery. But there's one question I want to ask. Do you think that it is all about these, uh, having these vehicles? Don't you think that some of them will want it in cash? And that is why they insist. Because in Nigeria, every <laughs> other person wants to be very rich so that others, he will become a god while others will become if, their beggars. If their rules allow for that, some of them will go for that because they have rules. <laughs> it's not even part of a, the, 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 the national law. They say, ah, the National Assembly has rules guiding it. If their rules allow. But I remember vividly, there's a law, a state lawmaker in Asaba, in Delta State, a female who collected the money and used it to build the bridge. Yes, and people uh, commended her. I've forgotten her name. I would have mentioned them. Uh, but unfortunately, even, our, even those representing us here, here in this studio, even in Niger State, generally, all of them, you see that uh, we have gap in terms of the, and the work of the organization is not just to go to Abuja and talk tough about a government, a seeming misdirected government policy. Yeah. No. How do you relate with your constituents? Yes. How do we access your office? I went to uh, the office of a, uh, a, 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 a certain senator. I, I won't mention his name. I came in there. I saw that everywhere was dusty. The paper I picked up, I asked the liaison officer. I said, uh, when last did you open this? He said, ah, we were here today. I picked up the paper. I said, this paper was it even a, a, a paper of last year. It means you people have not been here since. You understand? And then, and, and then you, you see, there are things we don't even get fed with. Things like the minutes or the gazettes or the or let me say the hands are if you like or, or what they call other paper of the meetings they have been having. You understand? So that we see where our lawmaker is pushing the thing we've told him to push. You understand? Every day we have accident in Obohe, people die. Who's, who's supposed to build Obohe? Do you think that road, if you are to be sincere enough, okay, Zio or Oti should be building that road? That's a federal road. So who, who should be making, making that case? If the lawmaker, if the parliamentarian, but they are far from us as we speak here now. Do we even have any way to access them? No. It's only when election starts uh, coming close, you see them eating corn around the road. I saw them eating corn anyway. And, and, and you see them eating corn. You see them trying to... to, to That's the only time we privilege to have a handshake. <laughs> and, and one of the things, you see, the, yeah, I remember the one governor was calling them, one governor here was calling them Abuja boys. You know, they will be there, Abuja boys. They come back here only during festivity, Easter, or whatever. Then there are offices. There is no impute. They don't even hold town hall meeting to know the aspiration, the need, and the and the demands of their constituents, people who are who who who, who they are represent. represent. Yes. And again, we also have a bad culture. I also should say this. Some of their hunger songs and those and those who know them transfer their problems to them. You want to marry, you are talking to a senator. Your mother is sick, you are talking to a senator. There is a, so, so we have the problem. Currently now we see that the, even, even this are actually made it for, for them to go there to grab power. Yeah, see, 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 see
subscribe to that because um, <laughs> I think the government we have today, they are busy impoverishing the people. What is it now? I mean, when you when impoverish, impoverish these this. people, they don't have means of you anything. Say, Let me tell you Why would they depend on me? The, and they purposely create this. I told you like now. That's what you call weaponization of governance. And um, every day, every year, there is an opening in immigration, mm. in customs, in the Nigerian police, in the Nigerian army, the Nigerian police force. You have opening, even in the police force cadets, or even in their academy, their schools, they have opening. Why will a senator who does not belong to the committee, who does not belong in the committee of police or anything, have a slot? That's corruption. That's so, 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 and that's why they, we, they will recognize poverty. And the, I, you see, I, I, I even experienced this. We had to go to one senator. We are looking for a job. A senator in Niger State. And if I for former senator, a job you know you are qualified for, you are going to see a senator to give you the job. Why will a senator be the one to give you a job? Instead of the job being there for you to grab it if you're qualified for it. How, how many times will even these senators or members of the National Assembly come home in a town hall meeting and say, these are the vacancies available. Those of you who are qualified, should have Yes, been. yes. That's see, what, it's supposed see, to that, be part of that, their representation. That communication gap is not there. Yes, sorry, it's there. It's there. Let, and let me tell you something. That is why there is hardly a bill any legislator in Asia State has pushed that we can say is people oriented. That is saying he's coming from his or people. What they were to discuss is what is just federal agenda, national agenda, maybe electoral act. We are talking about public bill, bill that is emitting from, from the public here. Bill uh, that we can say is people oriented, is pro people, is pro poor. You understand? Bill that is saying, let us know how to restructure the economy and take care of the market women in a in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a or to say. Um, how do we take care of that? Except when they when 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 not market money. Yes, when not market money. Of course, of course. Yeah. And we know some so, so, something similar is in the offing. You see, except when one lawmaker he uh, stood up and pushed for a bill for a particular medical facility to be brought to his constituency. I don't know when they when, how they are even able to attract some of these federal projects. All right, because of our time. Uh... We, the time is far spent on the day equally. So I wanted to, I wanted to, in summary, what are we looking at concerning this uh, refinery, the refinery, and also the promise. Yes. The Nigerians are, the Nigerians are very, very hopeful, very, very optimistic, yeah. believing that uh, by the end, or not before the end of the December, that these things are going to come down. I think um, government should be more sincere. This refinery we are building, everything about government spending or public spending, you don't just spend from the pocket, you have a source and there is a provision. You understand? The government should be more sincere. It's not just about trying to set a particular timeline and beating it. No. The most important thing is doing the job and doing it right. You see, I want government to be more objective, more uh, pro people, and more engaging than just promise because I cannot guarantee. If I sit here today to say I will guarantee, and I can prove, or I'm assuring people, that the refinery will come on stream by December. What if it doesn't come on stream by December? The Dangote the refinery, as we speak, was actually supposed to come on stream by August of this year. Later, it becomes November, by the later August. November, later November, today is the year to come over. The NMPC we talked about was supposed to go to uh, public offer, you understand? They were supposed to issue public offer, shares to be bought, since they became limited. They're supposed to do it since, since months ago. Now, they've not done that. It's the same, it is still the same government that will tell you we, we go we go public we give we we we, we, we issue for public offer. So so I am not here to but what I'm saying is that government should be sincere and learn to focus on the laws and spend there from to make promises realizable, not leave us hoping against hope. All right, the government should be sincere. I think that's the word uh, from the comrade and the they should be sincere they should also know that these are people here we represent the people you represent they they brought they, they help in making sure you are in that power that you're in that set so you owe them every truth concerning governance and uh, representing us means you're representing us in all ramifications. So it is very wrong for us, for, as we're expecting this refinery to commence operations by this December, that the end of the day is postponed again. And anytime such a thing happens, uh, the billions and millions 
quoted for it. It's gone. Nobody comes to talk about it. So the government should be sincere, and hopefully, I want to believe Nigeria will be better again. And I also want to believe that uh, by before on or before the end of December, the refinery will be working. Having said that, this is where we are going to draw the curtain today. With me in the studio, as usual, you know too well, is a comrade in Amdelekwachi. Comrade in Amdelekwachi, we are pleased to have you again today. I'm happy to be here. Please, federal government, do whatever you can do to make sure we don't have the Jews again this December. All right, and uh, this is our country. We aren't going to run away from it, and this is our state. We're not going to run away from it. So, the governor of government with Mr. President be people oriented having said that this is your command signing off for now until we come your way again on tuesday but before then keep listening to living radio 90.9 and watching living tv bye for now